Number 52. Automotive airbags inflate when the sample of sodium azide, which is NaN3, is very rapidly decomposed. And then they give us a balanced equation. So let's just write that out much bigger here. So I have two NaN3s, and that's a solid. Now when I write my balanced equation, who cares about the states? I don't care. States have nothing to do with the balanced equation. So I'm just going to leave it, leave it as no states because it's just easier to see. And this will uh, produce or yield two sodium solids, right? Two NAs and then the three nitrogen gases. Okay, cool. Now, I already see that there are coefficients in the front, which means that this equation is balanced. You could always double check, but usually if you see coefficients in front of your equations, it's already balanced, so we don't have to check. Now, here's the question, guys. It says, what mass of sodium azide which is the NaN3, is required to produce 2.6 feet cubed, or 73.6 liters, of nitrogen gas that has a density of 1.25 grams per liter. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to keep everything, you know, uh, nice and neat. And I like to write out what we started with and what we're trying to solve underneath my balanced equation. Now, we're looking for a mass of sodium azide. And they did tell us that sodium azide was NaN3. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna write down that this is what I'm solving for. Remember guys, mass is grams. So we're just looking for the grams here. Now all of this information is what they started us off with. We're trying to produce 2.6 feet cubed AKA 73.6 liters of nitrogen gas. And this is the nitrogen gas, right? It's the only one that has gas, so that might help you out as well. But nitrogen by itself is a diatomic. So we have 26, or actually 2.6 feet cubed, right? Which is equivalent to 73.6 liters. And they gave us some extra information. They did tell us that the density of the nitrogen gas is 1.25 grams per liter. Hmm. Okay, so usually in chemistry, they give you extra information because you're going to use it, but sometimes there are tricks. So just by, you know, giving me this information, I have no, like, additional feelings of if I have to use it or not, okay? So I'm just going to write it all down. Let's see if we have to use it. Now, when we have a equation right? When they give us information of one compound and they're asking us for information of another compound and the only relationship that those compounds have are through a balanced equation, we're doing stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is just a fancy way for use ratios and conversion faction, fractions uh, with balanced equations to, you know, go from one compound to another. That's it. Now, there's a little flow diagram that I like to use for stoichiometry, and I highly recommend you remember it or write it on the top of your quiz or test, and it's this right here. So it's in basically two parts. There's two compounds here. There's my A's and my B's, right? The A's are the information of the compound that they gave you, and the B's are what you're trying to solve for. If you've seen the, the arrows keep going to the right, so you want to solve for the one in the B, right? Or in the blue. So I color coded this for you guys. I'm looking for NaN3. So that's going to be the blues. And I have this information. So that's got to be the reds. So let's just fix that for right now. And maybe I will, you know, bring this out a little bit just so that I have a little bit more room. So... We have to start with grams of N2 to go to moles of N2, because that's the starting material. And then I can go to the moles that I want, which is NaN3, the sodium azide. And then I can finally get the grams of NaN3, right? Stoichiometry, or this flow diagram, is grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams. But however, did they give me a, gr a gram value? No. They gave me a volume right? 
They told me that I had 2.6 feet cube, which is a volume, and that equals the 73.6 liters. So how am I going to go to grams? Oh, they gave me the density formula. So in this case, I have to use the density. Density with the liters, right? Now, just make sure that you have the correct units. Always look at the units of the density. The density in this case is grams per liter, which means that I have to put in a liter to get out a gram. And it's good because I do have a liter here, right? This wasn't in mils, so I don't have to convert. Now, the formula, right, is D equals M over V. But if you just rearrange this formula, right, or if you keep it, you know, that way, and you just plug it in, you're, you're going to see that the mass is just the density times the liters, okay? Or the, you know, density times the volume. So all I have to do is take my density, 1.25, and times it by the liters. In this case, I, I don't care about this feet cubed, right? Because the density units are liters. So I have to take the 73.6. When I'm doing this, I don't care about the units, right? If you notice, I don't put any units in here because I know that I have the correct units. So I can just add the correct units on at the end. So I have 1.25 times 73.6 and I get 92. Now technically with sig figs we should have three sig figs so I'm just going to add a zero here and this is grams. So that's the starting material. I now have 92.0 grams of N2, right? I have 92.0 grams of the N2 and now I can, you know, roll with my dimensional analysis. So start with what you're given. I have 92.0, and I just want to make sure that that is the, yeah, right, 1.25, 73.6, and it was 73.6. Yep, okay. So I'll keep it with the colors. I have 92.0 grams of N2. Now we're just going to be doing a bunch of ratios, guys, right? Just look forward to see what you want, right? Since we have to convert that way, I have to multiply by a ratio. Oh, that was an ugly ratio. Put the unit that you don't want on the bottom and put the unit that you do want on the top. Always put your units first and then come back and say, what are the numbers? Just easier, I think. Now, we've done this uh, ratio before, right? We're converting from grams to moles and it's of the same compound. We've done this one. This is the periodic table. Nothing new about this conversion, right? PT, periodic table. And remember, when we're using the numbers from the periodic table, you always have one mole. So wherever the word mole is, you just put a one there. The number on the bottom in this case, or the one next to the, the word gram, is the mass on the periodic table. So in this case, I have two nitrogens because it's N2. So I just take the 14.01 and times it by two. So that's 28. 0.02. Okay. Cancel out the units that cancel, and now you're left with moles of N2. Now, don't, you know, equal this and try to get an answer. Let's just keep running through the dimensional analysis until we end up at the end. This will help save time on your tests and quizzes. So let's just try to get into a hang of it, okay? But it's not scary. All we're doing is literally what we just did before. I noticed that I don't you know, I don't want this unit, right? I got to go all the way here, but this is the next step. So multiply by a ratio, throw the unit that you don't want on the opposite side. In this case, it would be on the bottom. And now put the new unit on the top. So in this case, it would be mole of NaN3. Okay, now this is something different. We have a mole to mole relationship of different compounds. How am I going to get those numbers? Well, this is the new thing with stoichiometry. When we're going from moles of one compound to moles of another, we got to look at the balanced equation, the BE. And all we do is we just look at the compounds that we have and just say how many we have of them on the balanced equation by just using the subs, uh, sorry, not the subscripts, the coefficients. So for example, for NaN3, that compound is here, right? And the coefficient tells me that I have two of them. So I'm going to write a two right here. 
And for every two sodium azides, I will produce out the three nitrogen gases. So where the N2 is, I'm just going to put a three there. And this ratio is done. Cancel this out. And now we're here. But they wanted the mass, so I got to go to grams. So one more ratio. Multiply by that ratio. Throw the unit down that you don't want. So that goes on the bottom. And in this case now, let me just move this over a little bit. Grams of NaN3 go up on the top, right? That's the next thing. Oh, it's a gram to mole conversion of the same compound. That's what we did in the first part. That's the periodic table. We're back to the periodic table again. And remember, if we're using the periodic table, you find the word mole, and that's the one that has the number one. So in this case, it's on the bottom, but in the first one, it was on the top. The number, the mass number that you find on the periodic table goes with the word gram or the G. So you got to add up Na and three Ns. So let's see. So three times... 3 times 14.01, and then I have to add 1 sodium, so 22.99 in my periodic table. So I get 65.02. Ooh, oh boy. Let's see, hold on. 65.02, perfect. Cancel out the units, and now I'm at the unit. Oh, now I'm at the unit that I want. So now I can finally equal and solve. Now, two things you can do. You could multiply all of the numerators, multiply all of the denominators, and then finally do the single division at the end. I just like to run through it from left to right. Anytime that I see a number in a numerator, I will multiply. Anytime that I see a, a number in the denominator, DD, denominator, divide. This case, I don't use parentheses, and I'm able to get the correct number on my calculator. So 92 divided by 28.02 times 2 divided by 3, because the, the 3 is on the denominator, and then I just times by 65.02. I don't pre I pretend like the ones don't exist, because any time that you multiply by 1, you get the same number. Now... Since I started off with three sig figs, I should end with three sig figs. That's for, you know, the teachers and professors that have sig figs rules. But for me, I could care less. Whatever number you gave me, just as long as it was, you know, the correct number on the calculator would be fine with me. But let's just do it for practice. So this would be 142 grams of NaN3. And that's it. So basically what this is saying and what we just found out is basically like a recipe, right? If I wanted to produce 73.6 liters, which is the same as 90 grams of the uh, nitrogen gas, I needed to have 142 grams at the beginning. And that's, that's it, guys. All right? So let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to. At the present moment, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. And that's crazy. And I, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you guys that have subscribed or have watched the video. I really hope that we're giving you great learning content so that you guys can do awesome on your quizzes and tests. All right? So I will be talking to you soon. I hope you guys are having a great day. And keep studying hard. Okay? I believe in you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.